Okay, YouTube, what's up? Um, I know, I'm always wearing a navy blue t-shirt. Someone even commented on I have a ton of navy blue t-shirts. I just like them. I, I didn't film all these, every video in, in one day. So this is a new day. Today is August 30th, 2018. Um, today I'm starting the how-to series, how to make your fan film. All I'm going to cover today is the first step you got to do which is making lists, lots of lists, tons of lists. But the first list is the main, it's going to help you identify what you want to do and what you're going to need. And that's the, you need to have a budget of, or, or just like a clear picture of what is this really going to be and um, what's the cutoff. So let's just go through it. First thing you got to figure out, if you're going to do a fan film, based on my experience, is the format. See, I started mine. Mine, I wasn't really locked into one format. And it can get out of hand if you don't decide on one format. I wanted to start mine out as just a quick little short fake movie preview. Like, really short. And it turned into what it turned into. Um... So there's basically, I would think, three formats. Um, movie preview style. Do you want to do just a movie preview style? Uh, two to three minute type trailer for a fan film based on whatever character you want. Um, do you want to just do maybe a short fan film? Maybe like a 15 minute thing? Or do you want to do something longer? So those are the three choices. Preview, so super short, short, long, which is like I would say try, trying to get it to be like an hour after editing and everything, or um, really long, like a Peter's Web series. See, I started at preview, and then it upgraded to short, and then it became long, and then I let it become extra long, but... If you can do that, great, but I uh, I recommend choosing for your first fan film, choosing one of those. So once you decide the format that you want to do, you need to come up with the main idea of what your story is going to be about. What's the main idea? Like, what's going to happen in this thing? So, to where if you, like when you watch a preview or watch a movie or watch something... And someone asks you, hey, what was that, like for mine, well, hey, what was Peter's, what was that first issue of Peter's Web about? Oh, it's basically about he takes on the Green Goblin, you know, it's just the Green Goblin storyline. So, okay, that's the main idea. So then someone can watch the first one and they can know what to expect based on that one sentence. Oh, it's it's about the whole Spider-Man versus the, the original Green Goblin. Um so that could be like the main idea. So whatever main idea, you got to figure out what do you want the main idea broken down into one sentence. What do you want your, your trailer, short video, long video, what do you want it to be about mainly? Um, once you figure that out, the next list you need to make is a main characters list. So if you need a... If you're taking notes right now, if you already know, if you're like, I already know this, Roger, or you might be saying, okay, well, pause. You could pause it and then write down main characters list. I don't know how experienced anyone is with this, so I'm starting from scratch. I mean, this is how to, so. So you need a main characters list. So what characters have to be in your fan film? So is it going to be Spider-Man, the Green Goblin, Mary Jane, Gwen Stacy, Harry Osborn, a Norman Osborn, outside of, the, well, that's two characters, I count that as two, there's a Green Goblin and the Norman Osborn, because that's two different kind of scene setups usually, um, or was for me, because I had, I played Green Goblin and I had someone else playing Norman Osborn, um, but main characters list, and you really need to think about that because if you're going to put a lot of time into this, you better pick characters. It doesn't matter if you think they're doable or not. You better pick the characters you really want to put on to a, a live action uh, format. 
And then there might be ways to figure it out. You know, like I figured out every one of my characters. I never went into Peter's web saying, well, I know how to make Sandman's fist turn into a giant fist or into a hammer or make him grow big. Or I didn't know how to do that, but I knew I wanted Sandman somewhere in there. And so I wrote down Sandman. I got to have Sandman. I got to have Venom. I got to have... Car and I just went over it. I kept going and going and going. Uh... But like I said, I didn't sit down and do this list before. I kind of just did it as I went. Oh, well, I just did Sam. And I got to have Venom in here now. And then I, I should have done this. Um, so anyway, so then once you get the main characters list, the next list is going to be the costumes list. So like for Mary Jane, Gwen Stacy, Norman Osborn, that that's not really, I don't, I don't put that into the costumes list yet. The costumes lists are what costumes do I have to make? Like if you get a girl to play Mary Jane, you can easily tell her, I want you to wear these kind of boots. I want you to wear these kind of pants. Can you, when you come to the shoot, I need to try to look kind of like this picture, like in this comic book of the way she's dressing. That's easy. And then the actors, or you could do that with the uh, Jonah Jameson, whoever it is, tell them to dress like this picture in the comic book or in something else. But for the costumes, you're making that list for you. What costumes do I have to figure out how to make? Do I have to get the materials for? Um, so that's that's your costume list. Um, and then uh, I know we already did the main idea that you're going to want to write down, like a one sentence of what it's going to be about. But you also need to make another list now. Main things I want to see list. So that can be like, for me, let's say, I I need to have the Green Goblin on his glider at some point. So I'd write that down. I and just brainstorm. I would put, I would do like a, a circle map and just in the middle, draw a circle, main things I want to see. And then just in, all around that circle, just write down every cool thing you can think of. Venom shooting or swinging from Black Web. Uh, I gotta have... Sandman's fist turning into a hammer. I need to have, you know, Carnage shooting his symbiote slime everywhere. I need to have this. I need to have that. I have to see this. You know, I have, like, you have to make a list of those things to not leave the magical parts that you really, really want to create and put out there. That's important because you don't want to do a, put yourself through a whole production and doing this and making that and then you're watching it and then you're just like, I should have shot bigger because I'm not really that fulfilled because I didn't, I didn't go for my dream and like what really got me into whatever character could be Wolverine, Hulk, whatever. Um, you want to watch your creation when you're done and say, "Yes, I did it. That that's exactly what I wanted. I saw that in my mind. I'm glad I went through with it. I created it. I put it together. Now I can watch it." And put it out there for others to see. So you need that list. Main things you want to see in your fan film. That's a list. Okay, so then um, the next list is kind of a big list. And it starts, like I, I wrote it, I just jotted a few things here. And nothing has to be presentable because if you're the director, um, you do it for you in a, in a format that you can understand. Because I just jotted this down real quick right before I hit record. I, this was like a couple, maybe two minutes um, so there's three things here that all are going to line up and make sense together. The first one is the needed scenes list. So this is when you already have your main idea, you know the format, you have your characters, the main things you want to see. Now you're looking at all these lists, um, or you might want to have it on like a big board and pin these lists onto that pin board. So you're looking at everything and then you have this list on a table and you're making it so it's going to be needed scenes list. Next to that, needed people per scene. And then next to that, uh, locations needed per scene. So then like at the top you would have, I know this is just chicken scratch, but this just shows how it's lined up. So needed scenes list. And then beside that, uh, needed people. And then beside that, needed location for that scene. So then it'll be like, needed scene, introduction, Peter at work, um, needed people, J. Jonah Jameson, Peter Parker, 
uh, assistant, and anyone you can think of, extras, how many extras? You got to write all this stuff down. And then I would put locations need, or location needed. So you're going to write down on the same line, you're going to write down office building. So then you're, you're, that one scene, you know what people you need, you know what scene it is, you know what kind of play, location you're going to have to hunt down and try and talk to someone into letting you film at. And then you can even do a fourth one, um, props or sound effects. So like for an office scene, it's like I need phone calls ringing off the hook. I, it needs to sound kind of busy, like there's more people in the office than it's showing on the screen. Um, or if it's a fight scene, props needed. And you might just kind of brainstorm about things you wanted to see. You go back to that um, things I, I want to see list. So if it's a fight scene with Green Goblin, so glider, pumpkin bombs, goblin costume, Spider-Man costume, fake blood. Like you're just listing all the props in that little fourth bracket. So then all the way across, it's all the needs for one scene. And then where does it go from that scene? And then you're just building it and it's... It's going to be chicken scratch, and you're going to make this list. You're going to reinvent this list because it's going to just be so much chicken scratch. You're going to reinvent this list so many times, but by the time you get to the end of this creation process of, okay, let me transfer all this because it's a mess. Let me transfer it to a cleaner piece of paper, and then that's going to change, and then you're going to transfer more added information to another paper, and then you're just going to have papers upon papers, but um, that's how you are going to build it that's how i built mine anyway now people can do stuff on the their computers i didn't have that so i i, I went paper and pencil i like that too because you always take it not worry about okay let me see what scene we're supposed to do next on my phone it's just you got a board okay next we're doing this i, I know what i got to do i can see the picture i'm not oh my battery died you know you don't have to deal with any of that just go i went paper and then um each scene, so like a scene is going to go all the way across all the little attributes for that one scene. And each scene, once you get the list of all the little scenes you're going to need, each scene now needs a storyboard. Um, so the storyboard is every shot that you want to see. And I did mine like a comic book. So maybe if I had a drawing of like, let's say Spider-Man, a close-up of his face turning, I would have... I would just, I mean, I, you can see how fast I, I did mine. I would like chicken scratch it, boom, and then look at how fast, and I could do this, and then I'll write maybe quick turnaround, and look it, I mean, it's, it does, who cares if it's junky art, but you can obviously see in the storyboard Spider-Man's turning around quick. You see the little lines, meaning he's moved, he had to turn fast. It's a close-up, and I might even add that. Turn a uh, quick turnaround close up, and now I know if that's my story where it's like boom, and then the next one is swinging scene. I do that later, and then the next one is this, and the next one is a punch, and the next one is every shot that you want the camera. So then your storyboard is made up. Let's say you have the scene for one one uh, storyboard for one whole scene, every little shot that you're gonna film and that you're gonna do. Uh, once you get the storyboard, then you're going to circle the board boxes that need no help in one color, maybe in pink or a highlighter, and then you're going to uh, outline the other boxes that need help. So then you can go do all the ones by yourself on one day or before everyone else gets there. So you might have everyone coming at 10, and you can either do all your shots solo before they get there or after they get there. Because the last thing people are going to want to do, unless you're your best buddy, you can't count on anyone though. It's only going to be you that really carries all the way through it. Um, you can be productive from the moment you get there. Well, I've been here two, an hour and a half and you know, Juan's not here yet. Who cares? You're, you're productive. You're filming it to where if no one shows up, you're going to leave that set and you're going to have... 10 boxes checked off. Be like, no one showed up. Everyone flaked. But guess what? I got 10 boxes checked off. Awesome. I got 20 seconds. So this, that's it. It's all about lists. Comment. I know you got questions. If you got them, hit me with them. Um, subscribe, share, do all that good stuff. Like it. And I will see you guys next time on the How-To Series for Peter's Wood. Thank you. God loves you. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.